So, without further ado, 4,000 deaths, folks. I think that's really put um, Dark Souls to shame. Huh. So we are still working our way up the summit, to the summit. We're not at the summit. Oops. Okay, I have to remember that I have three jumps. We're going to see. Yeah, yeah, the music is really good. Oops. Oh, I want to hit the wall. Not like that. Oops. Not like that. Didn't I just say not like that? Oops. We'll get there. Oops. Oh, man. This music. Oops. Ah! Aiming is hard. The diagonal. No! Why am I diagonaling when I don't want to? And then diagonaling... Okay. It's gonna take me... Take... I'll have to remember how to play the game. No, 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 no. No. I can do it. This one's not even that hard. But I'm having a hard time with it. In fact, I already made my thumb hurt. Is this the game... Oh, it is slowed down. No, you're right. Okay. No! Uh. No! <laughs> We're off to an excellent start. Up. No! Okay. <laughs> I'm very graceful at this game. See, graceful. Man! <laughs> this can just be like another hundred deaths right here. We're working on it. Good morning. Happy, uh, not morning. Oh, hey! So, congratulations, it's July, which is my fifth stream anniversary. Actually, technically, tomorrow will be the fifth anniversary of that very first story found stream that I was referencing before we got started. Um, and so, like, I was thinking, sorry, I'm gonna chill out so that I can then hopefully return this and not mess it up. Thank you! Yeah, and I'll keep talking about this all month because the thing is, it's actually really stressful for me to try to figure out how I'm going to like celebrate or what I'm going to do because I wanted to do this amazing medley with like a song from all 20 something games that I've played smushed together into one medley. That's a lot of work. Um, and I was like, maybe I'll put together like a, a concert or something like that with my friends, but that's a lot of planning too. And just all these things I wanted to do and I was like, you know, I still want to do them and they're good ideas, but maybe I can't do them now. So, I have concluded that the entire month of July is my fifth stream anniversary, and the entire month of July we'll be doing ridiculous things whenever we feel like it. Um, so, this Saturday I will be doing a free-for-all 
uh, like, there'll, there will be terror reading. There will be working on that medley because I'd like to do that medley, or at least part of it. Um, alright, Sal, my stream and you are twins. Congratulations! You have a sibling that is a non-object, um, god, what would you call, like, an intangible object? It's okay, Chrono, though. Because July is all month long, you see. <laughs> so, there will be other things going on. Like, I will do more celebrations. Maybe I'll even find some time this month to do a cooking stream. Um, and there's a special, special concert that I want to put on. Um, yeah, so in a couple of weeks, we're going to have, like, a little mini concert thing, probably, with some of my bandmates and close friends doing, like, little bite-sized, like, 15 to 20 minute shows to just kind of see how that goes. Because there's a bigger... Um, Fluth of July. <laughs> okay, Jaskin, that sounds, that phrasing sounds like a Chuck Tingle novel. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, yeah, so I need to make a banner for this month, don't I? I need to make a banner. Oh yeah, another thing we're gonna do. I'm giving myself permission. I think I've talked a little bit about the value of giving yourself permission to do something. I am giving myself permission to work on my stream this month and make it something of a priority. Because I'm always like super self-destructively like, nobody wants to see my streams and they do. They just haven't realized that it's dumb and they shouldn't want to see my streams. So why am I doing this really presumptive? Which is why streams frequently go up late. Um, because I, every single time I post a stream on YouTube, it's me fighting that little voice in my head that's very loud and annoying specifically about my streams. Um, but that's why we have no background image or background graphics anymore. That's why all of the graphics that we have are like three years old. Um, that's why um, we only have a single uh, subscription emote and all these other things. Because I'm like, it doesn't really matter. It's dumb. I'm dumb. Um, specifically about my streaming. Like, I've, I've made a lot of progress on self-worth and other ways and finding value in the other things I do. And the thing about streaming, and maybe... Thank you, Blue Glass. Yes, I did it. I posted the Final Fantasy VI stream on YouTube on the day I was supposed to. We'll see if I can keep up that trend and post this tomorrow on Friday. YouTube, if you're watching this on Friday, I did it. Um, no, so, so the thing is, um, streaming, god, we haven't even, like, finished a single room and we're already going. Way to go, Lauren. <laughs> so much for, uh, finishing the game tonight. No, um, streaming is actually really important to me. Um, cause, like, what I've always wanted to do with my life is find a way to connect with people and reach people, um, and maybe help make a difference for people. And judging by some of the really nice letters that I get from people, sometimes letters, I'm an old lady, they're usually like Facebook messages or emails or, or DMs on Twitter, um, but w whatever, letters, it's an inclusive term, it includes them all. Um, like, it sounds like the things that I want to do with my life are things that I'm able to do, and I think on some level I'm, I'm scared of it, and I'm not quite sure what it is that makes me self-sabotage so badly on streaming specifically streaming and not other things but there is there is something um and i want to try to fight that this month um because it's i don't know this has been really like this community has gotten like has i don't want to say this community has gotten me through hard times because like i have worked really hard when i first made the discord i was going through a lot and found myself kind of turning to the discord that I had made for comfort and support that was inappropriate for me to be asking. Because um, there's a power dynamic between streamers and their communities as we're kind of seeing happening in the larger like Twitch um, and even outside of Twitch like YouTube and things in general. Um, and so like it wasn't appropriate for me to be like I'm sad please help me feel better like that's not the kind of relationship that I should have with my commu community and I kind of pulled myself together and realized that um, so I won't say that the community got me through a rough time but I will say that the community has been bringing uh, light and joy to my life um, during hard times 
um, has made me laugh a lot in good ways um, and moved me um, and has been a really steady source of delight and pride for me. Um, so why, why shouldn't I give back to you guys and why shouldn't I celebrate that? You know? But first, I gotta finish this room. Oh. Oh, that's not good. Oops. That was a nice idea, but then I did a bad job. Okay. Where does this go? Okay. No! idea. Why are these spikes here? Just to be mean? Okay. That's what I figured! because it was three pixels or three blocks across which is usually like a sign that that it's a passageway that's the size of the passageway there okay does that mean there's another one i wonder okay no not there some flags. Does that mean that the wind is going to pick up going when I go there? Probably. What's it going to do, I wonder? Hey, dread killer. Okay. Okay, well, we somehow didn't die there. I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. I'm going to figure it out, though. No. Nope. Do the same thing we did last time. No! Oh my god, this is so this is really close. Is there another like sneaky thing up there? Maybe. It's Art Easy. Thank you for hosting. your head on things no big deal I don't know what I'm gonna do once I get there nope Now what? <gasps> Got it. Okay.
Nope. Not quite sure what to do from there. Just smash your face against the wall again. Good job. Deep. Nope, I figured no checkpoint. That would have been too, too gentle. Okay, we're just gonna keep at this until I can get it. <laughs> Which will involve a lot of flinging ourselves off of cliffs. save I want to save a jump because then I'm going to fall and then jump around on that side. I think that's what I need to do. I mean, it's just going to be a strawberry. I know it's just going to be a strawberry, but <sighs> Who that was tight. How on earth do I get over there like that? Because, like, what I feel like the answer is, is you somehow fall down here and then use a single jump thingy to get over to that wall thing. And then you fall down that wall thing and then you use a jump thingy to get around it. No, but that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, we're gonna slow it down a little bit. I don't know that that's gonna make a difference, but sometimes it does. I love how she's like peering around. It's like she's like looking to the future. Yes, Madeline, we've got it. I don't even know if I understand the idea. That was it, though. That was it, somehow. I think that was it. Close, not quite. Okay, let's try this again. We're close, we're close, though. I think that's what we're supposed to do. down of it which is healthy that no that should have been much easier to do that first jump on 90 percent no 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 so close aren't they? They're similar, yeah. Oh, man! Oh, that's exciting! Yes! Secret, secrets? Oh, really? 
I mean, I had to slow it down a little bit, but I think I did pretty well, all things considered. They're like, hey, in case you aren't sure what you're supposed to do here. Oops. Oh! Are any of those... Are there, are there any more secrets hidden in this room, yes or no? Oops, well, that's fine. All right. Then here we go. Whee! Oh, that was exciting. Oh my god, I'm so excited about that whole thing. Did you see that whole thing? It wasn't a strawberry. We said it was going to be a strawberry, and then it wasn't. Eek! Right! Oh gosh. Oh no, I have to remember how to do this. Boing. 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 If you'll remember correctly, that's actually... That's how... That's how I... Get it right when I get it right. Okay. Boing, 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 boing. three jumps and I'm not using any of them. Boing. 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 Yo, so what would, if I were to celebrate with a fifth anniversary Fifth stream anniversary cake. What kind of cake would it be? Yes. Oops, wrong way. But I'm trying to figure out what would be. made a number of butterscotch cinnamon things on stream over the years. Eek! Oh, oh, that's mean. Okay. <laughs> Do you like pancakes? Um, yeah, because it's the thing is like, You know, we did, I, I, so I have actually done baking streams before. Yes, bun cakes were my favorite food on Earthbound. Oops. But like, so when we did Dark Souls, we were able to come up with a cake that, um, was Dark Souls related. It was, it was, uh, Spicy, um, 
because I don't remember. Oh, because I was a pyromancer and it had orange in it because of Estus being like orange juice. And then it was a dark chocolate cake because of dark souls. And then it had a hole in the middle. It was a bunt cake because it was hollow. <laughs> I crack myself up. <laughs> I crack myself up too much to play the game. It wasn't pretty. It was really ugly. Like the, it was it was a it was just a plain bunt cake. Um, it just it was a it was a it was a spicy chocolate, spicy chocolate orange cake. It was tasty though. Mm. Oh, our cayenne. To make it to make it hot, like Mexican hot chocolate style. Oops. That's true. Dark Souls is interesting because it's beautiful in ways and then really ugly in other ways. Ha! That's very, very, uh, very sassy of you, Chrono. Uh, every room is like a mini boss. Yeah, so like what would what would encompass like the the the, the Lauren streaming experience? Like the first the, I think the first thing that I ever baked on stream was a uh... <laughs> Thanks, Chrono. Was a was a banana cake for my birthday. Um, back in like 2016, I want to say, I baked peanut. I, I I made a peanut cheesecake that was a, uh, um, no, it was a straw strawberry. Uh, what was my Mr. Saturn cake? I made a cake that I shaped like a Mr. Saturn. Oh no, Dread Killer, the strawberry cornbread. <laughs> See, we've done some cooking streams. It's just, it's been since 2017. Maybe even since 2016, no, 2016 and 2017 were the years that I did cooking streams. Um, it, uh, it, it, so Draskin, the question is, is, should it exist? I was doing a stream, a cooking stream for charity and you could pick an ingredient if you donated a certain amount. So one of our former mods, um, suggested strawberries in the cornbread or something like that and she actually lived near me so she was gonna try it but it had the cake had rotted by the time she got to my place oh okay it was really bad <laughs> it was amazing though it was an incredible experience. We did it! Oh, I just needed need to think about baking enough. I knew there was gonna be wind because I saw the flags, and certainly not because I remembered anything about this. is the place that I remember the least, I think. Because Brenneman was telling me he was in the Windy chapter, and I was like, what Windy chapter? <laughs> oh. What was happening emotionally in this part of the game? I did that wrong. Oh, is the part before the gondola ride? It's gonna take a while, isn't this? Yeah, I remember the gondola ride. And then at the other side of the gondola ride, is that when we get to the Crystal Palace? 
or whatever it's called. just at that point just like let the wind carry me back okay ah my hands good news though on the subject of wind um it turns out that having air conditioning on in the house makes my uh, computer less likely to overheat and my room is currently not overheating. Granted, we've been streaming for less than an hour. So we will see what happens when we've been streaming for longer. Oh no! I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this one, guys. Especially because it's so annoying. <laughs> I'm gonna try to take it easy and not hit the controller so hard with my thumb. So I don't, it doesn't actually make her go faster if I press the controller all the way really hard with my thumb. It's just that like I can usually tell when something is something that I'll be able to uh, do and get better at. Versus when I feel like I'm just like ramming my face into it. And so far this level has felt like ramming my face into it. Yeah, but see I've gotten better at them by learning exactly the exact process that I'm supposed to use and I don't like I don't like things that require exactness. I'm way too messy for that. Meep! No! Trouble the first time around? Alright. get to see a lot of my frog face with this game, huh? not solved what I'm supposed to do over here. Oh, the frog face. That's my frog face. Well, I'm apparently 
friends with the guy who makes frog fractions now, so clearly I just need to be a guest star in the game, having been a guest star on this podcast. <laughs> He's hilarious, by the way, as one might expect from the <laughs> very unique brain that brought us frog fractions. It's an amazing game. Oh man. Yeah, if you're not following him on Twitter, you absolutely should. He is a delight. Yeah, I was on Topic Lords with my friend Danny. Eek! That's a lot of wind. That's so much wind. <laughs> this is what I get for being so into a. Uh, Having air conditioning in my apartment right now. That's wind. Deep. Had to try. You can't blame a girl for trying, can you? Eee! Sorry. Yes, Topic Lords is his podcast. I don't know if we're going to be doing any of the B-sides. So close! Uh, it was almost a good recovery. Eek! Eek! Okay. I do not know Chrono. I don't remember. But it was back in like February, maybe? Hi, Lucian! That's the worst. That is, that is the, good. Yeah, yeah. Good job, Chrono. <laughs> I forgot that that's what, I forgot. <laughs> okay, so the reason why I'm cracking up here. I was on this podcast right and I couldn't remember the name of the episode but it's named for my stuffed animal purple face <laughs> you guys know purple face right oh man purple face he's a good stuffed animal I like him you'll never guess fun facts about purple face his face isn't purple <laughs> This is why I shouldn't be allowed to name anything. If you like the name Flutie Pies, I didn't name that. <laughs> yes, it is that one, Chrono. I know. Shocking. <laughs> no. 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 Boogie. I know, Candle. It's a. I actually do get people who are like, I, "You don't look like a flute to me," and I'm like, "Hmm. Well, maybe you're just not imaginative enough." I can look like I. A flute can look like whatever she wants to. Huh. No! What do I do? Uh, no, they're not. Diagonals are like, we hate you, Lauren. And I'm like, man, same. <laughs> not just yet. Like rapid succession, as if to say, Lauren, 
you think you're the one in charge here, <laughs> but you're wrong. Uh, I think you, I think that might be true, Joskin. Um, Gaius, I appreciate that. I like to do things blind. Green Lord. Okay, so the wind here is not quite as fast, but it's still fast. Oh, right! I remember that. Snowman, obviously. <sighs> yeah, because you're like, oh no, it's like Oshiro. Oh man, it's like the Yeti in what was that? Freeski or whatever? <laughs> do I want that strawberry? I don't think I do. Oh, hello. You're not supposed to be on this level, are you? I thought... Oops. Oh, no, I was thinking of George or whatever his name is. Oops, I'm gonna get smushed. Alright, let's see how this goes. Kevin, thank you. You would think I would remember that. I have a bandmate named Kevin. Hold on. Oh, it won't go backwards? Okay, it won't go backwards. It'll only go up or down. Got it. I do not want any hints, so please do not give me any hints at all. Some people want to do a maximum run, and that's cool, but I am... Oops! Not that person. We've had a couple of speedrunners come through here, which I think is super cool. Oops, I went the wrong way. Yeah, these aren't nearly angry enough to be Kevin. No, because I bet I want it to go through there for some reason. All right, all right, buddy. Oh, we wanted to go up there. Yeah, we do. Haha! Oh. -ha! Take that, not Kevin. Oh, and then I can just, and then I can just hug the back and ride it that way. Oh, that that stands for Tool Assistant Speed Run, right?
Okay, that is really cute, Peter. I appreciate that. No, 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 no. Defeated by gravity. The worst. close though okay I think that is that is what I'm supposed to do here no that not that's not what I'm supposed to do but that's okay man this is hard guys what will you do if we don't beat Celeste tonight what will you do if we have to do a whole nother week partly because I talk so much and partly because I'm really struggling with this there were secrets back there oh, what no oh no you could totally send not Kevin over here that's probably what you're supposed to do uh, yeah you're supposed to have not Kevin with you and then you can ride not Kevin up there all right not Kevin we try again That was way fancier than I expected. Oh, goodness. Goodness gracious me. Okay, hold on. All right. I have a second jump. I need to remember I have a second jump. Kevin, not Kevin. <sighs> Man, Carrie was the name of my childhood babysitter when I was really little. I thought she was really cool. the thing and it keeps going oh no oh my god okay all right not Kevin I could call it Justin see because Kevin is our guitarist and Justin is our drummer but I kind of like not Kevin Kevin might join us oh so I told you guys that I want to do a, a concert that is my bandmates and friends and stuff, like do a little bitty mini concert to kind of test things out as a sort of proof of concept before I do like a full concert thing that I'd like to do. Um, I'm hoping to have Kevin and, uh, and my bandmate Wedge, who sometimes join us. And then you guys can get to know my bandmates a little bit, which is good. I love my bandmates. 
when you can be like, Kevin, you're a star of the show in Celeste. That'd be great. No! I have played platformers before very poorly and as little as possible because I hate them. Let's try slowing it down a little bit. Like there are not very many. Oh no! I went back faster than not Kevin could be there. I did not expect that to work. No! <sighs> We're gonna get it though. We're gonna get it. See, like, this is not as frustrating as that other room was because I'm like, oh, I can see what I'm supposed to be doing and I can see that I'll be able to do it when the time comes. Like, I'm getting, I'm making progress, I'm getting better, and I'm able to see the solution to the problem, which is not jumping into spikes. Just FYI. Jumping into spikes, not the solution to the problem. Not what you're supposed to do. No! What did I just say? Hey, Lauren! Come on, you can do better than that. I know you can. I missed it. Well, okay, well, not Kevin made it, but I didn't. <laughs> I got so excited about not Kevin making it that I that I hit the spikes. Not Kevin, excuse me, not Kevin. I did not think that was gonna work, actually. Can you believe he left me behind like that? It's not very nice of him. No! Oh, what? It, it kills you too. Okay. Fine, fine. Here I was thinking I could not have to see the death animation because I felt bad for killing Madeline again. It's so mean! Oh my goodness! Is there a secret in this room? Yes, no? Okay, 
cool. <laughs> Just everything failed. All right, we can do this. Come on, not Kevin, I believe in us. This is gonna be it, this is gonna be it. I actually hate it when it's like this is gonna be it because it never is, you know? <sighs> no. Yeah, 95 fathoms, that's probably gonna be me. The thing is, this room's actually super cool because it's like all about strategy type stuff. Do I need to slow it down again? I don't know if I do. Okay, so this one is not. Oops. So this one is not a Kevin. Not even a not Kevin. Oops. Oh, goodness. What the heck? This is the hardest strawberry in the game. Schrodinger's Kevin! <sighs> this one doesn't have a button on it, so it's not a not Kevin. That is a strawberry, all right. Oops. Oops. Oh yeah, my room is definitely beginning to get really toasty. Not like, not like sweating toasty. I just, I'm feeling the accumulation of the heat. For those who are not in our Discord, we've been lately trying to solve the problem of Lauren's computer is really toasty all the time. Oops, I did that wrong. Well, I think I'm just gonna be able to hang on to the side for a bunch of it. I mean, obviously I have to remember that stamina is finite and also so is your brain's ability to withstand being inhaled on spikes. I seem to have forgotten that again. <sighs> and your feet, too. Why is this one feeling so weird? Wait. Why is... 
Are there fake spikes in the game ever? Not there. Then why? No, no, there's a there's a pathway thing that looks like it That that on the right. Why is that there? Why is there a room full of spikes off to the side? Did you see that? Did you see it? Ah. But it looks like a pathway that's blocked off with spikes and that's weird and silly. All right, Lauren, pay attention. not a secret that does actually help Draskin because if, if it were a secret that would be really mean. It's bait? Okay. Uh, I don't quite know what I'm supposed to do there at the very end or even to get to the very end but you know I'm going to try of this screen it is actually really interesting because this is not like anything else in the entire game as far as specific symbolism for this scene at least I assume that's what you mean by the story of this Yeah, this this does this does seem like the sort of room that they would give binoculars to so you can kind of get a sense for it instead of having to figure it out through a trial and error all a NES game style. Okay. We got it. There's something to one side and something to the other side. Oh. Okay. One side has strawberries and the other side is, is the way you're supposed to go. Oh, I see. Oh, my favorite theme in the game? Oh gosh, I like everything about the mirror palace. Mirror to- oh, I even had it there and then I second guessed myself. Bum. Bum. Oh, 
Boing. 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 seems pretty conclusively to not be the answer. That's also not the answer. Look, Maddie's hair no longer has to uh, follow the laws of gravity. The rest of her does, unfortunately. But if you were to cut her ponytail off, it would be able to make all the jumps. Caresto, I, I, I will try, but, but... They're such tempting spiky spikes. Oh! I bet if I went fast enough, I bet if I went fast enough, fast, 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 fast! <laughs> <sighs> so close! <sighs> no. Take that, my strawberry friend! <laughs> oh look, it's the return of not Kevin! Hmm. Okay, so I think I want to go that way. Okay, not Kevin. You ready not, Kevin? Because I'm going to ram my face into some spikes fighting you. Just to get to you. No! Tyrus, I really appreciate your dedication to this bit and I like it. <sighs> I 
no. I really appreciate that the answer to those little like smirky smirking strawberries. I don't know what they're called, but I am hereby dubbing them smirking strawberries. I love that now that I have double to hand dash, the answer to get them is just be like, mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, 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 oh no, as you grab them, they're like, oh, 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 and you're like, no, I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna get you, and with like the intensity of like, yeah, your stubborn willpower and extra dash, you get those. <laughs> I'd try playing that. Problem with Mario Kart is that I'm really, or I was at least at one point, really good at the Super Nintendo one and only the Super Nintendo one. It is, I guess that is kind of the noble woman laugh, isn't it? Oops. jumps. Oh, I like that. That's a good one. I really feel like we could make up a story behind the George jumps. Wasn't there a George in something? George is the name of my mom's Nanaimo bar recipes, which I was going to make Nanaimo bars for Canada Day. But I forgot and didn't get the ingredients. And then I couldn't go out to get the ingredients because my roommate thinks that we're sick, possibly, or she feels like she's sick and consequently is concerned that she might have COVID. And if she has COVID, I probably do too, given that we live together. <gasps> My mistake. I can do it, I can do it. No, are you serious? I don't know that I'm going to do this one, guys. I don't like these. I think the only one I've ever gotten was the one that used Space Jam. All right. Gonna require extreme precision, which I'm not sure I'm down for. Hi, Sitaki. So, what would go on Space Jam? Like, what, yeah, like what kind of jam would Space Jam be? Cause like I got my mom this jam once that was called traffic jam. It's okay, Sir Taki. I'm doing challenging extra stuff that I don't need to do, and yet here we are.
L jumps is a good way of putting it. Let's see what we can do here on our own, but probably. I can't even switch my thumb over there fast enough. Man, starfruit. Okay, so explain the blackberry. Starfruit, I assume, is because... How much did I slow it down? It feels super slowed down. stolen light. Actually, that is exactly what I was trying to puzzle through. How much should I slow it down? This feels way slower than 90%. No? This is 90%. Okay. Have I suddenly activated speed brain, Lauren? Actually, yes, Speed Brain Lauren would be Lauren being hypomanic, which let us hope we never see on stream. I mean, I've probably been a little hypomanic on stream before on occasion. It's not usually a big deal when it happens if it's a little bit, which sometimes happens. Rutke, I appreciate your, uh, your positive interpretation of that. Oops, that's not right. Yeah, so Sertaki, um, there are, there's this entire range of assist mode and you can like tweak things a little bit here and there if you want. Um, like you can have slightly more dashes. You can make, I don't know what dash assist is, but you can turn that on. You can turn invincibility on or off and you can slow it down all the way down to 50%, which is really cool. If you're like, if, if only I could have a little more wiggle room, like a little bit better reaction time. I don't know what dash assist is. But you know, this game has perhaps some of the best accessibility features I've ever seen. Ah. Oh, that would be super cool if it could do that, Lydian. I think I have to go immediately. I don't think there's any time to pause there. I could always turn it on and check. really really cool so you can like still you can still do the motions but you have if you don't have reflexes that's a super cool assist feature wow there have been times that like I feel like <sighs> what did I do wrong there what am I doing wrong there Yeah, it's bullet time, but for jumps is a good way of putting it. We're going to try a little bit slower. Oops. Wow, I feel like I'm going through molasses here. Yes, if we play the last chapter, the, the, the extra chapter... that would have been it, um, then we might see for ourselves some of these more sophisticated assist modes. What 
So does Ori have assist modes? not allowed to say that I can't play genres. So maybe I will play Oops, another. Well, we're going to play Hollow Knight at some point, although not next. Next, we're going to play Wander Song. And then I don't remember what we were going to play after that. Possibly Mist, I think, or... Or we may go to Hollow Knight. Oops. Sorry, folks. We're just doing this over and over again. Yeah, Wander Song just I it just it sounds so cute. How do we, okay. Okay, what am I supposed to do there? Go straight up? Outer Wilds. Yes. That's the one that like the less you know the better, right? Peter, are you enjoying it? <clears throat> I've heard it's extremely charming and that it is... Oops. <sighs> That's what I hear about Wander Song. do it. Yeah, I was expecting Wander Song to be like a really, really short game where it like, as in like, done in like maybe two streams, but apparently it's not. Which I mean, granted, I, I acknowledge I am an extraordinarily slow gamer. People will occasionally ask me, how long is this game that I want to play? You played through it, Lauren. How long is it? I'm like, don't ask me. Ask literally anyone else in the world. I, part of why I haven't done it um, has been because I've been like, I like having a game that I can sink my teeth into and so the little like one or two stream games. Oops. Oh, I love the little squish stretch animation. Yeah, this game is really satisfying. There's a word for it. What's that called? We had to turn the assist mode to, to that, but we did it. Oops. Smear frames. Thank you, Kroner. That's it. That one actually felt like less of a battle. Oh, I see. That's precision is what that is. Mean. Oh. 
Like, it's funny, I spent at least as long on that one, if not longer, as I did with some of the others. Um, but I feel less like a victory dance after. I'm like, oh, oh cool, I got it. Oops. Probably shouldn't try for this strawberry, but I'm trying for this strawberry anyway. Uh, it would help if I didn't diagonal when I'm trying to not, not trying to diagonal. Okay, hold on. Uh -huh. That's what I thought. You hit it really fast. I had that feeling. Oh, so my mom is uh has sent my I told you guys I, I ordered a switch. <laughs> Which I maybe shouldn't have, but I did. Uh anyway, my mom sent it out. So it's it left the US today. So it might take two weeks to get here. Although we did, we have had packages take longer than that. I do not, oh, I do actually own a game for it, but it's a game I've already beaten and I forgot to tell my mom to uh, get that for me. Oh, I should have, hmm. Cause I thought about seeing if Ring Fit would be a good, good alternative to DDR sometimes. It's, I don't even know how it works, but I think it's not just diagonals. I think it's not just your legs, which GDR is. Ah. So yeah, if there's anything in particular that you guys would like to see me stream on Switch in about a month or so, that should be a. Uh, option that should be an option but you'll have to tell me what it is and we may have to be careful budgeting for those I do still have um, breath of the wild on axles uh, Wii U I'm not playing any Paper Mario games for some time. I will let you know when I am ready to play Paper Mario games again, but I'm not ready to play Paper Mario games. Yes, I got it. I have beaten Night in the Woods. Um, so the thing is with Animal Crossing, is that I don't actually know that I would get a lot out of it. Like, it seems really cute. Oops. Um, I really, I don't want to talk about my Paper Mario experience, but, um, but I have an association with folks that I, I don't want to. Yeah, the Night in the Woods folks don't usually do, um, Ah, shoot. Oh, Link's Awakening, that's right. The Night in the Woods folks don't usually do bundles, but that was such a good cause that they made an exception. You know, I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. I think that that third one is... Trick. <laughs> All right, Let's see. Not very nice. Okay, so there's no way to do that without. I did a cover of Ballad of the Windfish years ago, actually, like a couple of years before I started streaming. Uh 
Ah, oh, that's that would have been it. Okay. Oops. Hey, Ninja Neb. Oh, I really want to play Mario Odyssey. Yeah, so my problem with platformers has to do usually with 2D platformers. So, um, the 3D Marios and I are good friends. I love them very much. Oh, shoot. I love Mario Galaxy so much. Uh, why? Ah, you're just trying to ride it as much as you can. Okay. Oh, really? Had in time is taking the 3D Mario's. Oops. Oh my god, the Nyakuza. Oh my god, okay, so there was, uh, I was playing Final Fantasy XIV, and I love looking at the ridiculous names people come up with, and there was somebody who was the, the cat type, who was their name, like, Agatha Neon Binary, and I was like, that is really amazing. Oops. I did not think that was gonna work, but it did. Oh no! Oh no! No! Oh, man, yeah, I can tell this is towards the end because it has a battle in grab thing. Oh, it's an eyeball, it's looking for you. How interesting. So I've played Okami, or not Okami, I haven't played Okami. I've watched Okami, so it would not be a blind... Ah. I don't know that I would play one of the Yakuza games. gonna be really annoying because it's the last room. Oh, I love how she like reaches. She like kind of tries to grab at you. Silent Hill is not gonna happen. So there's games that are genres that I didn't know that I could play, but there's games that are content that I know I can't play. And uh... <sighs> oh my gosh. And the wind is of course being as mean as possible. She's like, look, if you're just gonna fling yourself off, I can't help you. Oh, 
But I think I own Wander Song for uh for Steam. So I will probably do that. So Crypt of the Necro Dancer. The, the thing is, I love to play DDR. But Um, but I'm not sure that roguelites are for me. Oh, and there's also more Talos Principle stuff! There's the Talos Principle DLC that I haven't played! Uh -huh. I say I wouldn't play Crypt of the ne Necker Dancer on Switch because the only appeal for me playing games like that is to play them with my feet and there's no dance pad for the for the switch that I I believe I have played portal much to everyone's dismay I played portal before I started streaming as I tell people me playing portal was exactly what you want it to have been Oof. one shot I started playing um, a few years ago and we lost that stream forever so we're waiting until my memory becomes so bad that I don't remember how it goes Sorry, I'm like trying to have conversation with you guys and also trying trying as hard as I can to not die. Like, if I could play Cadence of Hyrule with my feet, I absolutely would. have played Journey. Oh, isn't the new um, game from that game company available on Switch or coming to Switch soon? Uh, Sky, I think it's called. interested in that. Oops. Sorry, I'm having a hard time sort of keeping up with the chat, which is good. I'm glad we're having... Oh man, Greece! Or however you say that. I know people who really like it, and they say it's an, just an absolutely beautiful game. Oops. I haven't played Abzu, that's true. I haven't heard of Inner Space. Um, Squizgar, I grew up with the King's Quest series, <laughs> so I had some trouble with Monkey Island because LucasArts logic isn't quite the same as, uh, Sierra logic, which is what I grew up with, but I do want to play Monkey Island 3 because that's the one my sister is obsessed with. Oh man, my sister is trying Grim Fandango because everybody has told her that it's the best um, adventure game ever made, which she is skeptical of. I don't expect her to like it that much, but we'll see. I haven't played it. Westwood logic. I'm afraid I don't know that. I think what remains of Edith Finch is a content warning that I won't be playing. That's true. LucasArts games are vastly less punishing. Um, but, uh, no. Okay, Blade Tiger, you say that. Um, 
So there was a strong bad adventure game that came out years ago for the Wii. That's how long ago this was. Um, and the strong bad folks grew up on Sierra games. So my now ex-husband and I were, he was playing the game and I was hanging out with him and he was getting really frustrated. He kept getting frustrated. And I would be like, well, obviously you need to do this, this, and this. And he's like, what? I was like, no, just do it. And every single time I was right. Um, and he was like, how do you know this? It makes no sense. I'm like, really? Because it seems super obvious to me because it's basically, that game is basically easy mode Sierra adventure game. And there is actually a way of solving problems uh, that is somewhat consistent with Lucas, or Lucas with a Sierra games from that era. Um, so, so it is a style of logic. It's just weird. Um, whereas, like, I find the way LucasArts thinks to solve problems n nearly incomprehensible when it comes to the Monkey Island games. Loom is much simpler. Loom is much easier. Um, we played Loom on stream, I think. Is Loom on my archives? I think I put it up there. Not sure. Um, with Edith Finch, it's not it being scary. That's not what I mean by content warning. Um, content warning for me, like, there's things that are scary, but then there's content warning, like certain kinds of violence that I'm not comfortable with. So I, Brenneman and I played Peasant's Quest together when he came to visit me in Pennsylvania. I have learned to think like the aliens in Sierra. I haven't played Quest for Glory. It was given to me when I was fairly new to streaming by a person who's no longer friends with me. Um, most games that I hesitate to play is because I have an association with somebody else. And, uh, with that game, I associate that game with somebody and that can be kind of awkward. So I haven't played a short hike, but I own it now because I bought the mega ultra pack. Um, I don't think I know full throttle blue glass. You could ask me about loom and I'll tell you, I'll tell you about loom or I'll tell you about tallest principle. I need, I need to get that button made. I need to get that button made. It's so good. Yeah, we're gonna play Monkey Island 3. I haven't played any of the Dalek adventure games. Are those the ones that have a really mean main character? So my sister played through uh, Zack McCracken recently, which scared us both when we were children. Um, and she says it's, surprise, surprise, not actually scary. Because it's a comedy. The Depona uh, games are the ones that I don't want to play, I think. Those are the ones that are really all about a really super unlikable character. I haven't heard of Battle Chef Brigade. Oh, you know what else? Um, I want to play Trails in the Sky. So I try to like keep, like there's kind of like a, ah, okay. That's what I thought, Blue Glass. I had that association with that name. Okay, so I can stand here and rest my thumb. That name sounds familiar. Yeah, Trails in the Sky. I actually own one of the Trails in the Sky games um, that my friend gave me because he knows I would like it. Oh, Deadly. Oh, the. Oh, Deadly Premonition, right? Because it's not a what's his name game. I always think Deadly Premonition is by that guy. You know, you know the one. David Cage? And then it's not by David Cage. Oh, that's good to know, Blue Glass. Thank you. I had not figured that out. Yeah, if there's a thing where you're like, oh, this has a really uncomfortable story, then it's probably not a Lauren game. I don't know, Chrono. I, I mean, that's a really hard to understand thing.
Okay, well, if it's hard to play it, then no, it's probably not a game for me. Not if it's like that, anyway. It's like people are like, oh, you like games that say something. Are you going to play Spec Ops The Line? And I'm like, mm -mm. nope. Oh, see, like, if... See, that doesn't sound... That doesn't sound nightmarish. I... Body horror is not a super fear of mine. Unless it's like hands. I have a problem with hands being injured. Apparently. Is Disco Elysium better at being an adventure game than Kentucky Route Zero is? Because Kentucky Route Zero is not an adventure game, but it thinks it is. And it's very cute that it thinks it is, because they definitely grew up on the same games that I did. Um, but they made a weird art piece that sort of has occasional trappings of adventure games. Oops. Ah. Yeah. Disco Elysium is on the list, too. Yeah, she thinks she was going to be mad that I wasn't going to come to her. Ah! Alright. I do like that they signal. You, I'm like, oh, I'm near the end of this because there's battle in bubbles. Which is good because my thumb hurts. Ah! Oops. Yeah, I might slow this down the whole way through, actually. But having some trouble here, just in general. Oops. I'm gonna say a game face that's called Little Nightmares is probably, unless it's like, unless it's like comedic, like children's nightmares, it's probably not for me. What did I say that was harsh? I lost track of what I was talking about. Yeah, we're not gonna beat this game tonight. I apologize, folks. Thing is, Kentucky Route Zero was so much that it didn't need to be an adventure game. Oh man. So out of these out of this world is a fascinating thing because it's like the game that like single-handedly inspired so many game developers. Like I think I swear Oh I've so I've seen Psychonauts. And I think I remember it too well. I haven't played the Colonel's Bequest, but I'm familiar with it in theory. I would like to try the Quest for Glory games. I'd like to try playing Grim Fandango myself. Oh, Beyond Good and Evil! Oh my god! Okay, yes, I've played Beyond Good and Evil. I love Beyond Good and Evil very much. <laughs> I played Beyond Good and Evil a long time ago when I was terrible at video games and like... Okay, so you know how good I am at controls. I didn't know that there was a go button for the vehicle. I really wanted to cosplay as Jade for Halloween one year. Just because I loved her so much. And Paige. I loved it all. I loved that game. Basically, Beyond Good and Evil was a game made for Lauren. So 
So I have I'm a sucker for stories with lighthouses. I'm a sucker for stories with orphanages. I'm a sucker for like rebellions against evil like I guess in that case evil alien occupation. Oh, oops, I did that wrong. Weebo boss, which game are you talking about? This game? I have been playing this game. I have put 24 hours into playing this game now. Oops! Yes, yeah, a game with a group of rebelling orphans whose base is in a lighthouse, like... And you even, like... Okay. So I had never played a stealth game before. But, like... It turns out the games where you very, like, sneakily try to figure out what to do, like, puzzle stealth games, apparently that's a thing I like that I didn't know, but, uh, Beyond Good and Evil is Baby's first stealth game, and, like, basically they made that game for me. It's so good. It's so good. Even when it gets kind of weird in the story, it's fine. It's fine. There's been worse. Try to pay attention to the game here. All right, we did it. Oh my god, yeah. She sounds so spooked. <laughs> to be fair, that was really spooky. Like, not like spooky, like, 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 spooky, spooky, scary, but like, what? Like, are we gonna do it? Are we gonna do it? I felt close, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't sure. Hey, it's better for her to not be sure than to be convinced that we're going to fail. Okay, so stealth games that are built around you being stealthy, it's fine if that's, like, the gameplay mechanic. It's when they try to put stealth sections into games that aren't stealth games that it's a problem. So. No, Madeline! Oh, maybe. Is Madeline, is Madeline going to give us the pep talk? Oh my god, that would be really cute. <gasps> she, 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 she. Every subsequent this is a little bit farther in her development and her like this piece of her like the the, the part of herself that doubts her is like beginning to like first almost believe her and now believes in her yeah Oh, I forgot that I slowed it down. I have to figure out what we're doing here. Did it always work like that? Sirtaki. I've actually always wanted to try that because I watched my ex-husband play through Ooh, that was cool. Chunks of it a long time ago. Long, long, long time ago. Long, 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 long time ago. Um, before I even moved to Austin. So that would have been like 2005. Um... 
Good night, Jaskin. Thank you for making it through that with us. I know it's it's probably super late. Oh, I love the Mirror Temple. The Mirror Temple is one of my favorite part. Yeah. 3 a.m. Oh, right. I forgot that's how this worked. Okay. Hold on. Anyway, long story short... We, we might, uh, we might. Yeah, I'm, I'm realizing momentum is a thing here. I forgot about this. Yeah, I liked, I liked, I liked what I saw about Deus Ex. Why is that keep, why does that keep happening? What am I doing wrong? I assume I can't go, yeah. All right. This is the hey, we heard you like synthwave music. Oh, so close. Oh, oh, there's, oh. Oh, do you see it? Do you see it? This is so totally a Metroid. Look at that. Look at that secret passageway up there. They're like, no, you will not get through here. I guess I could have jumped onto that. Well, there's an entire thing up there that I won't be able to do. Oops. Oops. Diagonals. Curse you foiled again! Oops. I swear I wasn't pointing a direction. Oops. Super Metroid is one of the greatest games ever made. I'm really not sure what I'm doing there. Something's happening with the mechanics of the game that I don't understand. Mmm. Okay, I'm gonna wanna jump. I think I understand what I'm going to do. Oops, I meant to go up, but I didn't. Oh, right, okay. Got it, I figured it out. There we go, we got it. I have triple jump. Why is this here? I don't know. Oh man, I never made it very far in Fusion. Oops. Ah, ah. Is that a hot take, Chrono? The only people I know who like...
Ha! <gasps> mirror, mirror, mirror. Huh. That's a weird decision, but okay. Oh, spikes. So, but there's like, there's spikes and then there's spikes. You know? Alright. Oh, goodness. I got the timing wrong there. <laughs> okay. This is going to take me a minute. Sorry, folks, that I'm not, like, reading chat so much right now. Oh, jeez. What even? What even? I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. Maybe I'll go this way. the slower side. Oh! Oh, I see. Ah, the harder side is the side that has the strawberry. I wonder if we can get that strawberry. Really not sure. There we go. Got it. Of course, there's going to be like a whole thing going on here. No, there's not. Okay. Yes. Ha ha. I got another strawberry. Very exciting. Okay. So what's, what's the here? Oh, that's to show you. Okay. Chameleon twist. Oh, are we talking about... <sighs> Alright, well, we did it. Look at all these creepy vines and spam, splam, splam. Wait, hold on. Okay, I had to try. Oops, this is gonna take a little while, guys. Okay. 
Oops, then you just ride on that and then you go up the wall. Oops. Ah. Uh, yes, I've heard a lot of people complain about the stealth section at the end of Zero Mission. And they're basically like, this doesn't count if you can say you've beaten the game. If you, uh. Mm -hmm. No! <laughs> I'm doing great. Oops, overshot that. Oops. So, do you think we'll be able to be finish this next week? <laughs> I'm not sure that we will. Okay. But knows that we're playing a game with lots of jumping. There we go. We got it. We got it. We got it. I had to check. Well, this is going to be really nasty, isn't it? I can't even imagine trying to play this not with a controller, to be honest. Moth dude was <laughs> correct, it's diagonals. Speaking of Metroid games, you know who's really bad at space jump? It's me. Oh, it's me. I heard so many pe people say, I didn't know you could be bad at space jump. I thought space jump like made the game too easy. Well, let me tell you, it is possible. I don't even know how that happened, but I'll take it. Hmm. I have to check. Anytime I see something that looks like a like a weirdly cracked wall. Jeez. Oh no. Okay, we got it. that I can't I can't retain a space jump once I start it I can't do it like I because of my problems with diagonals
I, because you're supposed to just go straight this way or this way, but because I do diagonals when I don't intend to do diagonals all the time, um, which is also part of why I have trouble sometimes with, uh, with the blitzes in Final Fantasy VI, um, is that I kept standing up out of space jumping because it thought that I was doing a diagonal, which, by the way, spoiler, I was not. Yes, that is exactly what happens with us. Jeez, what the heck even? Oops. Oh, oh, look, it's like we might actually be almost done with this. Cool. Oops. I feel like I must have skipped a lot of things in this level. Because, we, yeah, we're at the battle end screen already. I'm having some trouble. Since we talked about diagonal trouble. Oh my god. Oh no, right. I just completely missed some strawberry rooms. Just completely missed them. Oh well, I guess that's okay. I wanted to get more strawberries. Because I love this I love this this level. Okay. Right, blue glass, but it's still like anytime you change directions you have to hit left or right. But what if you accidentally hit a diagonal? And you crouch out of it! Because you were just trying to go this way instead of that way. Doesn't go so well. Uh. I heard people be like, you are the only person in the world I've ever met who had trouble with that. And I'm like, okay, fair, but I still had trouble with it. Uh... Eek! Alright. Focus, Lauren. Focus. Eek! Eek! Oh man, so what time should I do things on, uh... On Saturday, when we have our big ol' stream thingy, I feel like we should start at maybe like 11 a.m. That's right, Blue Glass. I'm very good at, blue at diagonals. Time zone Eastern time. It'll be too early for our folks on the... I guess that'd, that'd be too early for our folks on the West Coast to uh, hang out. But if I go long enough, then it won't matter. Oh, Ninja, thank you. I hope you're enjoying them. Uh, as I always tell people when they start on some of my older streams, my life has changed a whole lot since then, so if you stick around here, especially if you um, are new, if that's the first stream of mine that you watched, um, which I don't know, sometimes is the case, sometimes isn't. You may, Maybe you've been by here before. I'm sorry, I'm really bad with names. Um, but I try to warn people because uh, sometimes they'll show up and ask questions about things, and I'm like, yeah, so... That is not the case in my life now. Oops, I did that wrong. Oops. 
Oops. Okay, Nev. Okay, cool. I've probably talked to you and asked you about your name before, and I apologize. You were a fancy Millie, but I remember your name. Just saying how bad I am with names, and I am bad with names, and it's nothing personal towards anyone. I just... The thing is, if... If someone has... Uh, been relatively new. My memory is actually worse than it used to be. So things that uh, things that are like that happened longer ago, I'm actually more likely to remember. <laughs> in those cases, game with Rue and Mint. Oh my God! Threads of Fate. Do Prism. My sister tried playing that before finding out it was a puzzle game and not a. I think it's like a puzzle platformer, and she had thought it was like a JRPG, which I had thought it was a JRPG too. So she was very disappointed in that. Oops, I'm just all over the place. I think it was a- it was some genre that she doesn't like. Like, that she can't play. And I think it was like a puzzler platformer, maybe a puzzle platformer. Somebody who knows it, please confirm. Okay, so it is a puzzle platformer, yeah. Because, like, you know how I am, or how I say I am about platformers? My sister is worse about platformers, and she doesn't generally play active games that aren't, like, she t t will play, like, action RPGs, but... Oh man, okay, well if you found me in 2017 then I have no excuse, Neb. My apologies. God, I'm having a hard time with this. I think I'm getting messy. Ha, see I learned that that's what I'm supposed to do here. Okay. So I think what I'm gonna do here is then wait for the right time. And then jump. Oops. I was like, oh, I'm going to wait longer to jump. And then I didn't wait longer to jump. not that hard I'm just I'm just playing messily oh oh it goes from red to green and then it flashes Well, Neb, I'm glad you're here with us now, and I hope that you enjoy your time hanging out. <gasps> See, then I waited too long. Ah! <laughs> nah. No, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this. You jump, and then you do that. Boing, boing! <laughs> Eep. Eep. No. Oh, blue glass, very funny. I might be getting tired, or at least tired of 
about playing. No, 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 I was close, I was close, I was close! <laughs> uh... Oops. Oh, that wasn't intentional? Well, nicely done, my friend! Accidental punnage, well done. Okay. And then you jump and then you immediately start to go over there. Oops, that's not what I meant to do at all. <sighs> yeah, maybe we'll maybe we'll assist mode. Oops, and then fling ourselves immediately off the edge. Yes. Good job. Boing boing. Goodness. That's not what I meant. Timing is a little different than what I'm used to. Yeah, just dash down there. Okay, let's try this. Huh. Hi, Julie. Oops, I got myself smooshed, 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 smooshed. Lucky. I am okay. And then you ride it a little bit and you'll get some momentum. Got it. Okay. Oh, no. But I'm also running low on, on grab energy. Ah. Yeah, like there are good things in my life, even though there are also, of course, the crummy things going on in the world around. This is a tricky one to aim. <sighs> then you jump and then you go up there. Okay, hold on. Uh, no, and I have to do the whole thing over again. That's annoying. I mean, I guess good thing it becomes much faster. Well, I'm getting really good at the first part of this. <laughs> at least I think I am. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Okay, so is there a reason why I might want to go down here? Nope. Oh, there's a strawberry there. Okay. It, I, I figured out where it was shortly after getting there. Well, that's okay. We're gonna do it. We can do it. We can do it. We're gonna do this. There we go. Yeah, strawberry. 
I might not have gotten very many strawberries this time, but I did get some strawberries. Oh no, oh no, oh no, you have to do the whole room again. we go I got a strawberry and I finished the level we are close look at how determined she looks <sighs> oh my gosh <sighs> she's like trying she's still like a little bit scared and a little bit skeptical oh what what Madeline is holding herself back. But yeah, no, you do need to learn to trust yourself. Boy, is that a hard lesson. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out fracturing your personality and trying to cut off pieces of yourself that you don't like or don't understand or don't think are helpful is not actually gonna, gonna work. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Been trying to leave you behind my entire life. That's interesting. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Scared, too, probably. Yep. I know that feeling. Being like, wow, I spent most of my life with all of this stuff unresolved. Why did it take me so long? You know? And it is really hard not to like be like, what could I have done if I had just fixed this problem with myself sooner? What could I have done? But some people never get to fixing those things with themselves that they want to work on. So, so thank you for subscribing. It's very nice of you. Um. But, you know, any, even one day spent, I think, loving yourself and understanding yourself and in a better place, like, is worth all that effort that it takes to get there. <laughs> it's almost like the mountain knows what it's doing. Yeah, yeah, that's... That's, I, I think I've talked about radical acceptance before several times. 
but just like the the idea of accept even if you hate it even if you wish it was otherwise especially if you wish it was otherwise accepting what it is is the only step towards moving forward you have to accept the reality of the situation that you're in so you just said you thought we could do it come on oh if we don't make it that's okay because we tried yeah no radical acceptance is extremely powerful for so many situations. Because it's like. <sighs> there's like a powerlessness in the things that we cannot change. Sorry. Tangent. And so it, it seems like. Is accepting it giving up? No, it's not. But it, it's 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 standing on your feet. You have to stand on your feet, or whatever your equivalent is. Because um, I realized that's um, maybe a little. Uh, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Anyway, it's it's it, it that is resting yourself uh, on some solid ground first. before trying to run or jump or any of the things that you're trying to do. Yeah, no, honestly, I like understanding radical acceptance, I think is a helpful, it's a big concept. It's really big. I'm by no means an expert, but I think that it's something that can be really powerful, especially for people who have chronic illness, for example, things that you literally can't control. Like a lot of life circumstances, you're like, okay, well, with some luck, this might get better or I can work really hard and get better. Um, but when it comes to like chronic illness, things with your body, like there's not much luck. There could be, it could be like, you know, a new treatment comes through something like that. But like, like I understand that that is really hard and so I feel like radical acceptance is kind of helpful in that circumstance. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine who has some significant chronic illnesses that they're still trying to diagnose and I was talking to her about that and she was like, yeah, that's kind of where I am with therapists is just kind of having to accept it and then figure out, okay, this is the reality I live in. What, what can I do within this? What can I do about this? What could be done to change it? But first you have to accept the reality of the situation as it is and you have to accept yourself as you are you know you have to accept all of your flaws your weaknesses and your strengths accept yourself as you are say this is how I am you don't have to say like this is where I want to be but you can say this is who I am this is what my situation is this is what I'm like and then figure out what where do I want to go yeah Madeline you did <laughs> it can't be coincidental that those are the trans colors, the trans flag colors. Thirty? 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 Oh! What does that mean? I see 30 flags. Rose, I'm glad. Oh man, this music. Okay guys, you better be okay with the fact that this might take me a while. Oh, 
Hello, friends. I got half of them. Oh, is it you? Yeah. Oh, man. Well, that's cool. Okay, this is going to take a bit. Ho! Oh. Okay, so it starts you off with the last flag. Your stamina less here? <laughs> Has the controller always shaken when I do those? controller is shaking up here. I don't remember that happening and I would think even I would remember that. Oh, the wind. Oh, that's wind. I thought it was raining. Is that so it is what it is? It feels like it, it feels like it's shaking more than it used to. Okay, well, <laughs> remember the thing I was saying about my memory? So hard. <laughs> I 
I appreciate the uh, Sesame Street reference. I actually didn't like Sesame Street when I was little because I was like, I am too old for this. Uh, realizing that actually Sesame Street is amazing and it's a uh, it's its mission is incredible because it was for kids in a uh, like inner city situations where like maybe their parents had to you know work extra jobs and their school systems weren't um, weren't as well funded um, and so to give them uh, a fairer chance, because it really, like, it really makes a difference those first few years of your life. Hold on, we're gonna we're gonna try for the strawberry, folks, because it's right there. Mr. Rogers had a slightly different focus because his goal wasn't, um, his goal wasn't to, uh, educate on, like, educational stuff. His goal was to, uh, yay! His goal was to kind of help kids develop. Honestly, I think we might call self-esteem, um, as opposed to trying to bridge uh, an educational gap. Um, they're both super, super important. Oops. I was sort of sorry when I lived in Pennsylvania. Um, at one point I went to uh, Pittsburgh for um, a Nightwish concert, actually, and I was sorry that I didn't go. There's a because Mr. Rogers is from there apparently, and there's a Mr. Rogers Museum. Well, he was all about teaching kids like emotions and 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 love and things like that. Oh jeez, and then I think you go straight up after that. Ah, too late. Okay, let's see if we can do this. 22. My birthday's on the 22nd, so 22 is my lucky number. I had died then I would have been very frustrated and sad oh no hey I think I see Ornstein has joined us hi Ornstein you gonna um Oh my god, blue glass. That is the cutest, most Mr. Rogers thing. Hmm. Oh, well, welcome from YouTube. Uh, that's, okay, that's not enough. What? What? What, what do I do here? No? No! <laughs> oh, I just got a strawberry medal achievement unlocked. Reverse path strawberry? Is that not the way I was supposed to get it? 
Oh man. Oh goodness. Okay. Wait, do I? Oh, I forgot I left assist mode on. Well, that's fine. That's probably part of why I've been having an easier time of it than some of you guys had. That's part of why it felt so slow. Because I was like, wow, I feel so slow. Everything is like molasses. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do here. No? I don't know. Maybe this is not the one that I should have taken the sister it off. We're, you know, it's been working so far, we're gonna do it now. That's also why the, the vibrations are slower because they, they last for the entire length of the dash, I think, so they last longer when you have assist mode on, so they are more noticeable <laughs> with assist mode. Oh yeah, we need to design Flutie Bot. I'm gonna, as part of my fifth stream anniversary thing. What is the plan here? Oops, I need to use a jump. Okay. I really don't know. Like, I'm seriously stumped here. pushes you down the wall because I guess that's the wind and the rain. Not hit not just yet. Jeez. It's be partly because it pushes me down. Oh I see. Okay, I think I see what I'm supposed to do. Let's see if I can if I can do it, if I can pull it off. You gotta mash. Oh, I did it wrong. Okay, no, I can do this. Oh yeah, no, my hands and fingers hurt pretty badly. That's all right. Did the did stream go? Hold on. I'm seeing what blackout just happened. I'm seeing uh oh. Oh, I'm still here. Okay. Okay. I was concerned. Oh, somebody had a. Okay, stream's still good. Somebody had a blackout at home. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. That's that's stressful. I'm sorry, Candle.
Oh, I wanted to try to get around there because I wanted to see if there's anything else I could do there, but I didn't get a chance to. Was there a strawberry there? I bet there was. Oh, the wind is going to make me go farther now. Just trying to teach you. Take a bit. Why is that getting? Why is that stopping? Here, Justin. This is my first time playing the game, so I'm playing it the best I can on my own. I tend not to look for um, hints and things like that. Oh wow! Okay. Quite. Thank you. Thank you very much for dropping by and for the well wishing. Bum bum. Bum bum. Ba boing. Ba boing. Oops, that was too much. La la la. Boing, 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 boing. Oh, there's a strawberry up there. I don't even know how one would get up there. Oh, wow. But there's nowhere to, okay. My goodness. Boing, boing, boing. No, I probably didn't want to use. Okay. All right, let's try to get it. Oops. Oh, this is gonna be a bit tight. No! It's, it's just, it's right there, and I want it. You know? I don't know that I'll maybe be able to do that any tighter than I have. That one at least was easy. However, I do not know how I'm supposed to get up there. Yikes.
I assume this is the way I want to go, and that the other thing is... Fourteen and thirteen are cursed. All right, well, we'll see how I do. But then what? Oh, no. this one. I don't know that I have enough jump. Actually, I might have enough jump to get across there. I will say, like, wanting, suggesting that I shut down is actually not a bad idea because I'm pretty sure that I'm going to want to talk after the end of the game. And I don't want to... <sighs> uh, I don't want to uh, feel tired or rushed. Goodness gracious. Okay, let's see if we can get this. I know this is the idea of what to do. Let's see if I can do it. Because I was like, hmm, that's interesting that they have a... Wow. Oh, shoot! Oh, I'm going to run out of energy. Okay. <laughs> that's true. Let me try to finish this one, and then we'll have a, then we might have like a, a couple minutes of, of chat chat about it. Yeah, there were there actually have been a, a bunch of games that I've had that problem with. Okay. No, I can get this. I can get this, folks. And then we'll shut down for the night. I mean, granted, I'm playing this entire thing at 90% speed. And I'm okay with that. I feel like that's all right, right? I mean, like, it's still a fun, like, it's still a fun challenge. And if it seems easy, I can always come back and play it later without it. Cause apparently that's the thing I'm gonna wanna do. Who are you and what have you done with Lauren? <laughs> I can't remember. When was the last time besides DDR, which has a very special place in my heart? <laughs> when was the last we're gonna just listen to this music while we while we while we have our little closing thoughts for the night? When was the last time that I played a game and was like I want to keep playing at this to try to get better at it. I'm Florence the Loot. You saw through me. <sighs> That's my evil twin self. One of these days, 
One of these days, I'll show up on stream with a goatee and you'll know. Oh, it's Florence the loot. It's Florence's evil self. Huh, or maybe when I'm in Texas again, my sister and I will just trade streams. <laughs> you guys would be able to tell the difference, even if we were both wearing wigs. But a lot of people can't tell the difference, which is funny, because we're not actually twins. <laughs> huh, yeah. I'm not usually someone who's motivated by challenges, per se. Well, and it's weird because... <laughs> Thanks, Kendall. <laughs> you know, Chrono, we've, we've wondered that ourselves. <laughs> oh, I love my mom. <laughs> but yeah, no, the, the joke here, if you haven't seen a photo of us, is that my sister and I look very, very much alike, and we look so much like our mom. There's photos. There's photos that I saw of a little girl playing in the snow. It's a black and white photo, but that happens sometimes. And I was like, Mom, when did this happen? I don't remember being, like, in the snow, like, at this age. Like, where, where were we living? And she's like, Lauren, that's not you. <laughs> that's me. I, I, I literally couldn't tell from a photo that it wasn't me. It was, in fact, my mother as a child. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> well, but so... So I've always thought of myself as being a not good gamer. And, and, and what's that growth mentality? Fixed mentality versus growth mentality, guys. Ha! I've discovered what our ending statement is gonna be! And it's to theme! And you guys came up with it first, so I'm just stealing it from you. Yeah, um, because you've heard me talk since Talos Principle where I was like, since when can I do spatial reasoning? When did this happen? And what, what that was is that was me having this fixed mindset of I'm bad at this and not I can get better at this. And like, am I naturally gifted at platformers, 2D platformers? No. Combination of reflexes and spatial reasoning and things that don't come as naturally to me as they do for other people. I'm not especially naturally skilled at them, but that doesn't matter. That's the thing is it doesn't matter. And it is really, really hard for me to internalize that it's okay to not be naturally good at something. Because some one of the more unfortunate things that I inherited from my dad is this mindset that if I'm not good at it naturally, if I'm not good at something, then I then why bother doing it? <laughs> But, uh, yeah, no, the Artorias fight was, oh my god, that was such a good, that was so good. That was such a good challenge to overcome because it offered me the rewards that I wanted. Um, yeah, no, it turns out that you can get better at something, but you have to be uncomfortable, you have to be, you have to be comfortable not being good at something to become better at it. And, and this is the thing that is, okay, no, so, but Candle... The way I see it when it comes to talent and skill is we all come with like character sheets that get rolled for us, right? And I don't know that character sheets are necessarily right, but it's like, okay, who here has played Suicoden 3? So the way the gameplay works in Suicoden 3, like, so like the rest of the Suicoden series, which we will be playing next on Tuesdays. Um, so, okay, Job Jobber will get this. Um, so you have, um, what's the word? What's the word it uses for like your, your natural rank with, uh, with a rune? Affinity. I think it's called affinity, but you basically like, you have this natural affinity of how good you are with it is the way you come basically. Um, but that doesn't mean that you can't get better, and that doesn't mean you'll be good at it if you don't work at it. Um, and, and like, if, and so some people level up faster in certain areas. Like, some people start off higher up 
Like, some people start off, like, level one or two instead of level zero. And some people level up faster than other people. And I feel like, and that's not, that's not how it is this weekend, but it's just like in general, I mean, this is the, how I view it in life. Some people have, like, like for any given skill, ability, whatever, talent, whatever, some people start off on level like one or two instead of level zero, and some people level up faster. But that doesn't mean that those people are going to be better than people who don't have that. Um, because... What matters might, what matters more, and this is actually literally difficult for me to say because it goes against what I have believed about myself for my entire life. Um, oh, Candle, yeah, you want to save that phone power. Well, this will be up on YouTube if you want to catch the last bit of it tomorrow or whenever you have internet. Um, yeah, I know Tendellas, if that's how you say your name. That is a very good point. If you start off at a higher level, and you're, then you're kind of like, I don't have to work at it. Which is why I think a lot of the like gifted kids um, in younger years of school excel, and then they hit a brick wall, usually in college, um, university, because they never learned how to study, because they never had to. Okay, is it 10 Dales? Like, if I had 9 Dales and then a 10th Dale joined? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like, so my, my whole life I have kind of felt like if I'm naturally good at something, that's better than if I'm not naturally good at something. Because, okay, okay, I'm working through stuff here. I don't, okay, so I try not to, like, I, I think I mentioned earlier when I was talking about this being my fifth stream anniversary that I don't want to like depend, I don't ever want to depend on stream or the stream community um, because that's a really unhealthy power imbalance. But I'm going to talk my way through some personal brain stuff right now on stream and I hope you guys will indulge me on this. Um, yeah, I had to learn how to study later too just because of a combination of the way some brains work and the way the school system works. Um, but I wonder if part of why, because the thing is, if I'm not naturally good at something then the only alternative that's acceptable for me is for me to be terrible I have to be remarkable in some way remarkably good or remarkably bad either one of those is acceptable mediocrity is not acceptable for me um, and it's really hard for me to just like to be comfortable with the idea of being just okay at something and be like, well, I enjoy it, so does it matter whether I'm any good at it or not? It's it's hard. Um, yeah, and and like so so let's take singing. I didn't start singing until I was I think 19 or 20. I didn't know I was a soprano um, because I never sang or like literally never sang prior to that. Um, and we discovered that it uh, turns out I naturally have a good voice. Which is why I say some people are born with higher levels than other people, which does not make them better as people, and it does not mean that they have higher potential than anyone else, and it does not mean that they will do better than anyone else. It just means that they are naturally more inclined to, like they start off higher level and they might level faster. Um, and it was this huge weird thing for me because I played flute for years and I played piano since I was five because my mom's a piano teacher and here I am in college unable to do either flute or piano looking for an alternative jump to beginning group voice because I'm like oh I don't need an instrument to do this I'm probably gonna be terrible I say because I can sing like three notes singing along with my mom the contralto or counter tenor whatever the thing is when a woman sings a tenor part which I know gets kind of weird um, once we start um, opening up outside the traditional gender binary, but according to traditional classical voice things, these are roles. Anyway, my mom, my mom has a very, very low voice for a cis woman, I guess, if that's an okay way of saying that. And I apologize if any of you guys are um, either like trans or non-binary or something like that, and I have stepped into an uncomfortable place there. Um, please forgive me, I'm trying to to communicate a thing without hurting anybody, so 
I'll do my best with that. Um, but, uh, but so like I never knew that I could sing because I tried singing along with this person whose voice was much deeper than mine and I couldn't sing any notes. Okay, well that's good to know, Control C. And, anybody, and if anybody else feels differently and you don't feel comfortable talking to me about it on stream but you want to be like, hey Lauren, like honestly I keep pirate messages open on both Discord and Twitter and I am actively interested in learning how to be a better ally and friend. So, um, but to the story, um, I started singing and I, I know what a t music teacher is like when they see somebody with great talent and potential because my mom's a piano teacher and I saw her do that with some of her students. Never with me. I was never that. Um, and I was close to that with flute, but I wasn't quite that. My teacher when I was much younger, the, the, the teacher that I had in middle and most of high school, um, saw me as the second like as the second place that she could use to push her first place student farther. <laughs> Which, don't do that to a child. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, well, and also because things change and evolve too, so I'll do my best. So what I mean by that is, so I was a good flute player with strengths and weaknesses. I, I, surprise, surprise, I played with a lot of heart and emotion, but my technicality was messy. Partly because I didn't practice, because I started off at a higher level, because I started playing flute a little earlier than the rest of my grade level, and so they, they bumped me ahead a year. And so then when I was finally in band class with people who were my age, they hated me because I was first chair all the time. And they would literally write how much they hated me on their sheet music in class. And then the one time that I had a solo, um, my entire band career actually, as it turns out, the only time that I had a solo, they literally coughed on stage through the performance. <laughs> Um, so I stopped practicing because I was like, if I'm too far ahead, I learned a lesson that I continue to learn throughout many of the close relationships in my life, that if I did too well on something, um, other people would get jealous or uncomfortable and unhappy, so I should self-sabotage, um, so I could let myself be good, but not all the way good, because then people might, uh, might resent it. Just... Part of the reason why even though my Undertale streams started going viral um, while they were happening, I didn't I didn't jump on that and consequently missed flying off to Superstardom, which actually probably wouldn't have happened realistically, but I held myself back because it was causing problems with jealousy with people that I knew. Um, so what it what you mean with uh, with second place to push first place is the teacher would like encourage me to do better and try to get me to do hard things and enter me in competitions. Um, and then tell the other student, um, you know, Lauren is doing this too. You should, you need, you know, I can only enter one student. You should practice more <laughs> unless you want Lauren to get it. <laughs> you're pretty good, Lauren, but you're not as good as Christina. <laughs> I have you as, as, as a backup in case Christina can't do it. <laughs> it was a very specific thing. It wasn't, it wasn't competition though, because it was never Lauren, you need to work harder to try to catch up with Christina. It was never Lauren, you need to work harder to, uh, to, to see what you can do. It was always Christina, you need to keep working or Lauren might catch up. <laughs> yeah so then my mom took me away from that teacher um, at some point because I was not happy with that teacher and I I, I I don't know if it was me or me not communicating to my mom or misunderstanding or what but, but like my last two years or last year or two of, of flute my mom switched me to the best flute teacher in the Dallas area but she was older and more retired and kind of done her competitive thing. So we talked and she was like, do you want to be, do you want to do com competitions? And I was like, no. She's like, what do you want to do? And I was like, I want to play beautiful music and I want to play it with my whole heart. And she's like, oh good, I like that better. So that's all we did. I didn't enter competitions. I didn't try to get ahead. I just played it for the love of it. And it was a much better experience. Um, 
but I, and like another thing is like, I took, I'm, I may have talked about this on stream, on Celeste streams already, but like, I took BC Calculus in high school as an English student, like an English major. I took every single possible hard class I could take in high school. I took every AP class, because I was also taking an AP Physics at the time. And just like, you cannot, you can just not, you can say I don't want to compete and that's fine. Um, and I was always like, oh, I'm bad at math, but I'm going to do it anyway because my dad will be disappointed in me if I don't. <sighs> I don't know. And I'm just like, what if I just only took the classes that were related to what I wanted to do? What if I focused on getting better at the stuff I cared about or embracing things that I wasn't good at and it was okay for me to not be good at it? Like, so I'm good at DDR now, but I wasn't for a while, but that was fine. Like, my friends in high school were so much better at DDR than I was. I was by far the weak link there, but it didn't matter. We had so much fun and like, did my ego take a blow? Yes, sometimes. But my friends were encouraging, it was a positive thing, it never felt competitive, and it was just really fun. So I did it, and they would celebrate my- my victories might be smaller than their victories, but they would still celebrate them like they mattered. And- and I wish that had been the lesson that I'd taken away from high school, you know? That you can love something and celebrate the love of- love of it without having to be the best and be competitive at it. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of things. So, so, so I have this natural ability with, with voice and I've taken voice lessons some, but, but some part of me is scared because it's like, oh, I'm, I'm special. I'm special because I have this naturally better voice than I should have. Yeah, but, but people don't always celebrate small victories as though they matter because not everybody considers small victories to be something that matters. But for my friends, they they valued that and felt that it mattered and that was really important <laughs> well I had good teachers that's the thing is my, my calculus teacher was really important to me but at the same time I also don't know that I needed to be in calculus I could have just not and been less stressed and worked more on the stuff that I loved um, but but yeah like I have, I don't have a, I don't have the best voice. I don't. I know professional opera singers, but for whatever reason, people generally, like, there are people who like to hear me sing. Um, and people tend to think that I have more training than I do, and they think that I have more skill than I do, which is funny, because actually I'm probably going to wreck my voice because my technique isn't very good, which is a reason why I should take lessons more. But I don't take more lessons, because after a while, if you keep taking lessons, it no longer becomes special that you have the ability that you have because it becomes work that you've worked for, skill that you've built instead of talent that you were born with. And some part of me is afraid that if I can no longer say, oh no, I don't actually have that much training and people go, wow, really? I would never have guessed that I'll, that I'll cease to be special <laughs> and that my singing won't matter. <laughs> And that's, that's honestly the reason why I, I don't take voice lessons. I mean, part of it's also like it costs money, but I've had people, I've had, I have friends who are te voice teachers who would probably do like a trade, like discount for a trade of something, but I don't do it. I don't take advantage of that because I'm scared that then I won't be special. And because I don't have, because historically, I haven't had the sense of self-worth to believe in my own worth, value, and specialness external of what I'm, I'm able to do for other people or how I'm able to impress other people and be judged by other people. Um, it's, it's, it's frightening to think of giving up the bit of specialness because if I, if I give up those specialnesses, what's, what's left? Well, the answer to that is actually to build up your own internal specialness and to draw value from that internally. From something like, I love singing. I do. 
I love singing. I have an addiction to singing. Um, I used to have on my OkCupid profile, like I have like five things you can't live without and my voice was the first thing on the list. <laughs> so I like to talk and I like to sing so much. Um, Cause I like to share with people. So like, as long as, as long as I'm singing and I'm enjoying it and I'm connecting with people because they can tell that there's a passion for it in me and, and, and that resonates with them. Cause I, I bear my soul in everything I do. Um, then, then isn't that where the specialness comes from? And if you work really hard and are like, look at the thing that I've learned to do, isn't that special? Because you put that into it. And that's not to in any way demean or just dis dim dismiss like people having some pride in like, oh no, I'm good at this. Like, good, have reasons to love yourself. But perhaps it's safer, stabler, healthier, and more sustainable to be special for the love that you put into things instead of uh see every single time I talk about having self-esteem people raise concerns that uh that narcissism is going to happen and, and, and my counter to that is if you're somebody who wrestles with self-esteem and struggles with self-loathing, the likelihood that you're going to go too far in the other direction as anything but a defense mechanism, I think is very slim. And I think that's kind of missing some point there. Like, I think... You should, I think you should be able to assign yourself value. I think narcissism is when you start assigning your value relative to other people. And so I encourage people in their sense of self and self-worth and self-esteem as much as possible, separate that from how you feel about other people. And this is something that I need to work on as a, as a perfectionist. Perfectionists are frequently judgmental people. I naturally am a very judgmental person. I try very, very hard to fight it, um, especially in the context of my stream. This is good. This kind of environment makes me be a better person in that way because I want to be and I work at it. Because surprise, surprise, you can work at things and do better. Who knew? What a crazy concept. Um, but that sense of self-worth doesn't mean I'm better than other people, but it means I inherently have value. I have worth. This is important and matters because it matters to me. I love doing this. I love this challenge. I'm proud of myself. <laughs> it's okay. Good night, Chrono. Enjoy your, enjoy your, enjoy your snooze and I will see you later. Um, but yeah, so I think it's super important. Yeah. People are, are afraid of being narcissistic, but I think that's largely because they, on some level, don't don't trust themselves Be because I think that that comes from a sense of once more judging yourself because you're thinking I am such a bad person that if I give myself an inch I'm gonna take a mile maybe you're not a bad person maybe you're just a human being and it's okay you can trust yourself with that and not fear that you're going to succumb to your worst nature you know because when I say you should love yourself, do I think self-esteem takes arrogance? No, because I've known people who are arrogant and have no self-esteem. I think those two things are completely separate. <laughs> I would posit that I myself, for a bulk of my life, was both arrogant and completely and utterly lacking self-esteem. Um, so... I think that first and foremost, we should work on loving ourselves. And then we can, if we, if, if, if by some strange fluke we wind up going too far in the other direction, well then I will try to grab a hold of the, of the, um, the string on your balloon and tug you down. But, but first let's, uh, let's see about patching up our balloons and see if we can get some air to stay in them first because self-esteem is good and it is not a crime and it is not selfish. Um, so yeah, maybe I should 
try to take voice lessons to prove to myself that it's okay. That I don't have to be naturally gifted. That I don't, I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't de de derive my self-worth from that. Yeah, and if you can genuinely, truly, that's the thing is if you truly believe you are good at this thing, then you don't need to ask yourself if you're better than that person. You only compare yourself to other people if you are not secure in where you are now. And time and time and time and time again in my life, I have found people who I admire and look up to in some way. And like now I'm like, you know, older than they were at the time. I'm like, oh, they were not quite as wise as I thought they were. But, um, but these people who have this grounded sensibility about them, and they tended to be people who were very successful and, and accomplished a lot and it didn't phase them and they didn't seem to have an ego issue. And I was like, I need to learn, like as an adult now, I'm like, I need to learn to achieve that mentality without it being those people who are phenomenally successful. <laughs> um, you know, uh, but if you genuinely believe that you're good at something, then other people being good or bad, better or worse, doesn't, doesn't affect you. Why would it? Your accomplishments are sufficient. Your skill is sufficient. I'm going to take a break soon, Blues. We're just, we're kind of having a, a wrap up talk like we do. Yeah, and of course there's always ways for things to be slightly unhealthy, even if they're like generally a healthier thing so if not comparing yourself to other people if there's other stuff going on there then like i mean don't let me oversimplify your life you know your life and your mind better than i do but i still hold if you have solid self-esteem if you have that 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 solid core that 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 steady foundation of believing that what you do is good enough and who you are is good enough, and you have the worth, and you have the value, then you won't be saying that you're better than everybody else. Because I genuinely think that, with the exception of people who have perhaps narcissistic personality disorder, which is a more complicated situation, I think most people who go around putting other people down are doing so out of some place of pain in themselves. Not like the way necessarily that they'd say about like bullies picking on people to feel better about themselves where it's like oversimplified as an after school special. But I think that if you develop a healthier core that can stand on its own, you'll be in a healthier place. And that is one way that you'll likely be a healthier person. And this is of course biased by my own journey because that's what my journey has been is so much of so much of my difficulty in life has come from this lack of sense of self and so much of the the better position that I find myself in emotionally is because I've built that sense of self obviously other people will have more have will have different fundamental issues and and what I say and what I see is um it's going to be biased according to what my personal experiences have been so take this with a grain of salt but I do think that it's okay to love yourself. It's a radical idea. I keep saying that. I feel like every stream I try to find new ways to say um, it's okay to love yourself. But I didn't think it was okay for me to love myself three years ago, two years ago. This is a really recent phenomenon. And I've put a lot of work into myself over the past four or five years and finally it's, it's like cicadas takes a few years to come out but then it's really loud when it does no no honestly more like a, a plant a plant that you you plant the seed in the ground and have to wait a while for it to finally sprout but yeah no I am a work in progress but I'm you know yeah I am proud of the person that I built myself into. Because there were people who told me that I was doing the wrong thing. That I was selfish and terrible for trying to take care of myself and not other people. Um, but
but it is because I worked on myself that I'm able to be a better friend, that I'm able to be a better, you know, a better daughter and a better sister. I'm able to be a better person. I'm able to be a better, you know, coworker, a better companion. I'll, I'll probably be a better romantic partner when the time comes because I did the selfish thing and took care of myself. Which, does that mean that those people that I used to take care of who thought I was selfish when I stopped? I wouldn't take care of those people now. I wouldn't give them what I gave them then because that wasn't good or healthy or fair or reasonable. And building the foundation that I have lets me say, no, that's not an okay thing to ask of me. No, it's not reasonable. And you making me out to be the bad guy because I'm not doing that is your problem, not mine. Um, but so much of it goes back to you. Doing the selfish thing of giving myself permission to love myself. Um, and some of that involved what don't I love about myself and how can I fix some of the things that are within my power to change? What can I, what do I have to accept? What can I change? What isn't as bad as I think it is? So yeah, because I am, because I'm not hurting all the time, because I know who I am and I love things about myself. When someone else is hurting and lashes out at me or says something that challenges me or one of those things that might have caused me to lash out in pain, it doesn't hurt me, so I don't lash out. I'm less likely to be like emotionally exhausted. I'm less likely to give more of myself than I can give, overextend myself and then drop whatever I'm carrying or the person I'm carrying or the situation that I'm carrying. So I don't let people down or hurt them in that way. Um, and frankly, like, whether I intended it this way or not, like, there are people who consider me something of a role model, and I do more good for them modeling the ability to love and be proud of myself than being one more voice full of self-doubt and, and, and self-loathing. So... Yes, I'm kind of motivated to try to do better. Like, because part of me shies away from, like, when you're saying, like, are you proud of yourself? Part of me shies away from saying that. But then I'm like, you know, actually, no. In front of you guys, there are probably some of you who need to know that it's okay to be proud of yourself. So, yes, it's okay to be proud of yourself. Good night, Ninja Nab. Thank you for coming by. Hopefully, we'll see you next week. I probably could have beaten the game in this amount of time, but then I would have wanted to talk after it and I would have gone even later. <laughs> um, I think that one has a moral obligation to try to be the best you can be for the people around you. Um, I, I, was an, I was an unstable person and that led to other people around me being hurt sometimes. And it led to me hurting a lot. Um, and so the morally right thing for me to do is to try to make it so I didn't hurt people. And so working on myself helped with that. <laughs> Thanks, 95 Fathoms. Yeah, well, I just, I hope that we can get in the habit of loving ourselves. Oh, maybe Blue Gloss. We'll turn on, we'll turn on all of our cis modes and dive into chapter nine. If there's story, we'll do it. Um, you know, Kalantaras? If that's how you say your name, since I got Tendale's name wrong. Um, I think that's so good. I didn't have a spreadsheet because I'm more disorganized than that. Although now I make spreadsheets of things. But I had a notebook. Actually, hold on. I might... My memory's bad. Let me double check. I think I might actually have a document that's things I like about myself in my drive. My Google Drive. Oh, man. Well, I don't know if we'll do Talos, but we're going to do Wander Song first. Okay, let me see if I can search for uh, things I like about myself. I might actually literally have a document. It's the sort of thing I would have done. I don't know that I do, actually. Hmm... However, I do have a workbook of DBT skills, so I worked on things. Ha 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 ha, wow. No, but I have a lot of things that are close enough. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, well, we're gonna we're gonna do Wander Song next, and then we'll figure out what comes after that. Um, but yeah, no, I honestly strongly encourage you to make a list of things, and be careful the way you phrase things, but to make a list of things that you like about yourself, things you have to accept about yourself, and things you want to work on, and use that language. Because there are some things you have to accept about yourself. I have bipolar disorder. It's not going away. It's treated. I've been really stable, but it's there. Sometimes it might come up. So sometimes you just have to accept something like that. Um, but there are things you can work on. And then look at that list. And when you're feeling bad about yourself, look at things in the first column and be like, oh, but I have these things that I like about myself. And if you want to work on stuff, if there are things you don't like about yourself and you start like getting in that, that negative spiral, put down in that third column things to work on and think about it every time it pops up. Rewire the way you think about it instead of being like, I hate myself for this. Be like, I want to work on this. This is the thing I should work on. This is the thing I'm going to work on. And then you'll actually be able to get to the point of doing the work. Whew. Anyway, it is later than I thought I would be finishing tonight. But... This is how the Celeste streams have gone, and I think this sort of thing is really important. So thank you guys for sticking with it with me. Yeah, so it sounds like a fair number of people on the Thursday crew here are missed folks. Um and so maybe we'll do maybe we'll do Mist after Wander Song. Or more Talos. Or something else entirely different. We'll see. Um But Thank you, 95 Fathoms. They're so important. I really, really wanted to tag the stream with mental health because we talk about mental health so much during it. Um, I, I try to remember Moth Dude. I might have. That might be a good one to stick in between things. Um, as a smaller, as a smaller stream. Um, yeah. The only thing I remember about Mist is that there's like some room you get to early on that has like a dentist chair <laughs> that I thought was funny when I was little. But I didn't, uh, I didn't get very far <laughs> in that game. I didn't know it had story or characters, but apparently it does. Um, but yeah, so, so that, so if you want to do homework, I'm, I'm really proud of a bunch of the people who watched the previous Celeste stream um, actually put a thing that they, that they liked about themselves in the comments on YouTube, which I appreciate. This is not homework that you have to share with me, but this is homework that I suggest you do. Even if you have good self-esteem, it never hurts to do a little house cleaning and just see how are we doing. So take a look at that. Put together that list. Because... At the very least, having embraced yourself and finding things to love about yourself and believe in yourself and trust yourself prevents you from lashing out at Mr. Oshiro. Anyway. Oh no, exercising my baking skills. I do a lot of baking. Although I can't right now because it's super, super hot. Which is another reason why I should turn this off. Although I might be back for a super late night. Um, DDR stream tonight. We'll see. Well, folks, I need to shut down because it is approaching 11 and we are supposed to end at 10. But you know how it goes. I get to talking and then I just don't stop. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and head out. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you guys for sticking around so late and so long. And uh, we will beat the game, <laughs> I guess, next week. Oh, and Saturday stream might be at 11. Follow me on social media and Discord, but probably 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Good night. Take care. And I will see you guys later. Bye. <laughs>